and uh, on page seven uh, of uh, the Daily Nation, uh, they say storm in both houses as MPs fight um, over the economy. I see uh, the standard and this also page seven of uh, the standard. I see a story here by Edwin Nyarangi. Uh, Demo talks top list as parliament resumes. Uh, the star puts it this way. Actually, it's their top story. And they say focus on MPs as Ruto allies set new terms. House has a task of weaving a truce between Raila and Ruto. Deep set rivalry involving the two sides has been playing out. Um, Nerima, what's, what's your take on, on the format these talks should take? Mm. Uh, we have uh, Annette who says, you know, Article 1. Uh, we should have more people. If you're not on the table, you're not on the plate. You Maybe are you, on the, you're on the plate. The menu. Hey, okay, mm. you're on the menu. Yeah, <laughs> interesting that. Um, so I'm, I'm curious. These are the people's representatives. Representatives aren't we the ones uh, who elected them? Therefore, they exercise the constitution. Also gives them delegated authority. We did. We did elect them. And the same constitution also gives us the power to recall them. But there are challenges with recall. Um, but I do believe that our members have forgotten uh, who elected them. When we look at the, um, the data from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, showing that inflation is at 9.2% in March, in February as well. Um, a lot of the information that's coming out from members is still at blame games. Uh, we are past that point for very many Kenyans. And for them, it's really pinching their pockets. When they cannot get to work, they do not have work. We're also talking about a country that has a very high population of young people. Uh, we've seen the rate of unemployment also remain very high for a number of years. So when we have uh, President Ruto instructing KRA to come up with 600 billion by the end of the financial year, a lot of Kenyans, we would be fine with being able to give that resource to KRA if we could see where the resources were going if we could feel or see the services being provided to the Kenyan people. But at the moment, even just access to food is a challenge, access to health is a challenge, access to water is a challenge, access to housing is a challenge. And all those things that I've mentioned are our constitutional right, the social rights in Article 43. So I do think that at the top of the agenda, what we're hearing a lot from the Kenya Kwanzaa side is still blaming the previous administration. And we are not hearing how they are working toward minimizing how much they're spending. What we are not hearing from opposition, again, they're saying we're in an economic crisis, but within that shout that we're in an economic brink and crisis, they are still sort of having political lingo and a lot of political dialogue. We're still focusing on opening IBC servers, we're still talking about electoral reform, which is great. But the first thing right now needs to be on the economy because we are seeing a downturn globally. And what is that going to mean for the future of this country when if there was a study done by Shujaz, where in 2017, they managed to interview about 2,000 young people between the age of 18 to 24 and ask them how many of you support your household, your family, in terms of coming up with resources for your upkeep. And it was not even 50%, about 42 of them, 42% of them said. In 2022, the same study was done, the same age bracket, the same number of young people, it's at 100%, it's at 100%. So when you have a population that is so 100% of this year youth bracket. demographic between 18 and 24 uh, are unable to support or to they assist. are supporting or they are supporting yeah oh, okay yeah so it shows you how in a span of five years the youth population has changed initially there are some who are able to say huh I have parents who are still supporting me. I can maybe focus on school. I can focus on my own business, a hustle. Now that same demographic of 18 to 24 have to think about how am I going to support my parents? How am I going to support my mother? How am I going to support my family? And, and this is now a burden that we need to realize it's due to the economy. 
when parents cannot support their household alone and they need the support of their children who technically are supposed to be looking at their own upkeep since they've just transitioned into <coughs> adulthood and managing that responsibility and duty as an adult and understanding their role as a citizen. But now we're seeing it swap where they are actually partnering in making sure that there's food on the table together as a child with your parent. So these are the dynamics that I don't think our MPs realize that when you see that you're using a lot of your salary because politicians frankly are welfare officers mm -hmm. that's all they are they get a lot of phone calls about a hospital bill a funeral or something to fundraise for a church to fundraise for a house a market that burnt down they are basically welfare officers so when you see that you need a higher salary to provide welfare the solution is not to increase your salary. The solution is to make sure that resources are going toward providing the services for this public so they won't have to come to you. And so that's what I would like to hear in the House in terms of how can we make sure we're putting more resources in government services and making sure that each shilling counts, especially when we talk about revenue allocation, and services are given to the public so that they can focus on the bigger picture, which is how is Kenya going to survive this economic downturn globally.